Hi, it's Dave Usom from the Neuroradiology Division of Johns Hopkins Hospital. I'd like to share with you one of our Neuroradiology Pearls and Pitfall presentations. This is a patient who has abnormal signal intensity, which is present both in the anterior portions of the brain bilaterally and relatively symmetrically, as well as in the posterior portions of the brain. We see on the slide to the right that the pons is involved as well as the cerebellum. If we look at post-contrast T1-weighted scans, we don't really see very much in the way of enhancement. There may be a little bit of subcortical white matter enhancement on the image to the left. However, as you see through the occipital lobes and the posterior temporal lobes on the right side, the predominant abnormality is not enhancing, but is going to be brightened signal intensity on our T2-weighted and flare scans. When we have this presentation with abnormal signal intensity bilaterally, predominantly posteriorly, but potentially also extending anteriorly, what could be the diagnosis? Well, in this case, the correct diagnosis is demonstrated, as you can see here, by the absence of restricted diffusion on the diffusion weighted scans and the involvement of the posterior white matter, generally sparing the gray matter. And this is posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. Now, the thing that's relatively curious about PRESS, as we call it, is that it need not be posterior only. We do see this anteriorly. We say it's reversible, but there are some patients who have irreversible abnormalities with actual strokes. The E for encephalopathy, some patients do not have uh, an encephalopathic presentation, but present with headaches. So it's a little bit of a misnomer, but nonetheless, predominantly what we see is posterior predilection, a reversible process, and the patients are encephalopathic. Now, the usual mediator for this is hypertension. However, we do see this after certain medications such as cyclosporin and FK509 and other anti-tumorogenic um, medications. In the young uh, peripartum region, uh, we will see this in patients who have preeclampsia or eclampsia, and this may occur either prior to delivery or just after delivery. You may also see a similar finding in patients who have sepsis or in various medications that are illicitly used, such as cocaine use. So although we say that hypertension is usually the mediator, if you see wide, wide fluctuations in the blood pressure, as in patients who are undergoing dialysis or in those individuals who are using, for example, cocaine or other illicit medications where the blood pressure will fluctuate, you may see the patient at the time that they're normotensive, but they may have had in the past a hypertensive episode. In addition, if the patient typically runs at a low blood pressure, the elevation of the blood pressure from low into the normal range may be enough to lead to the posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. The, the mechanism for this abnormality is thought to be due to either overwhelming of the normal vasoregulatory mechanisms or due to fluid extravasation secondary to the high pressure. And again, it typically will affect the occipital lobe white matter as the most common location. If you'd like to see this presentation again or other educational material, please check us out on Facebook. And we have two sites that you can look for. We have the e-radiology learning site from Johns Hopkins, or you can check out our Johns Hopkins Neuroradiology Division Facebook page. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope to see you on the internet. Bye-bye.